Hey everyone, this is Brian at Obedia, and today I'm going to talk about warping audio in Pro Tools 9. This is really useful for fixing timing issues and adding a special effect to your audio depending on the effect that you might be going for. I'm also going to talk about making use of a software plugin called Strike by Avid, which is a great drum machine that will allow us to create a drum loop that we can layer over our warped audio when we're done warping it. We have a lot to talk about here, so let's leap right into it. I have here some drums that I laid down just a quick scratch, and I know that the timing is pretty well placed on them. They were played to a click, and I know that the tempo that I was working in is 138 beats per minute. Now you're gonna wanna know the BPM of the audio that you're working with. You can figure that out using Beat Detective inside of Pro Tools, or you can use a Tap Tempo plugin in order to get the BPM of the audio, you're going to need that BPM because remember, we want for a click track to sync up nicely with this audio. So speaking of a click track, we need to create one. So let's go ahead and click on track and select create click track. This creates a click track immediately for us in our Pro Tools session. So now we have a click, we have our tempo figured out with relation to our BPM. Let's go ahead and listen to this. There's a specific passage that I've been paying some, some attention to here because I think maybe it's fallen off a little bit. So I'm going to play this back from this passage right here and we'll listen to it with the click. So we can hear that the beginning part of this passage sounds good, but I think there's a little correction that we can do there. That's where warping is going to come in really useful. Now, before we leap into warping, couple other things that I should mention. Make sure that you're working, first of all, in a good grid mode. Click on your grid pull down and you're going to want to take a look at the different grid mode options that you can use. By default you'll probably be in minutes and seconds. You want to go to bars and beats. That's going to make it a lot easier for doing time correction and warping. And then you want to go ahead and select a resolution that's going to work nicely for you. I like to use 132nd notes because it gives me a lot of space to work with but not too much. 164th is a little too much and 116th can be a little too limited for some of this editing that we need to do. So go ahead and select your grid mode and then you'll be good to go. Now we want to turn elastic audio on on this track that we're working with. So in order to turn elastic audio on we're going to click the elastic audio pull down menu right here we see our options for elastic audio. I'm going to go ahead and select polyphonic. Polyphonic works really nicely for doing a lot of in-depth time correction with res respect to audio warping. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into warp mode. I'm going to click on my track view selector and I'm going to select warp. Now my waveform is going to gray out a little bit and I need to zoom in because when I'm zoomed in I'm going to be able to see these warp markers. So you can see as I zoom in I get these little gray vertical lines. Now what Pro Tools has done is it's intuitively made its best guess at where transients are happening in this audio. And transients of course are passages in audio, places where we can see things happening essentially. So here in these waveforms we can see these are snares hitting. We can almost be sure of that. Those are good solid transients. And Pro Tools has given us these markers with which we can start with. Now these are not yet active. I'm going to make them active, but first let's talk about the three different types of warping that we can make use of inside of Pro Tools. First one is telescoping warp. Now firstly, in order to create a warp marker, I simply need to move my mouse over one of these vertical gray lines, and when I get the double arrow icon right here, I can double click on one of these lines. This creates a new warp marker. You can see right here I have this small arrow down on the bottom of my warp marker. This means that I can begin warping the audio. Now telescope warping means that I'm going to grab the tail end of a piece of audio and I'm going to drag this warp marker using the double arrow tool that I have right here. So this is going to allow me to stretch or shrink the size of the region and I'll be able to keep the timing because of the other markers that have been created. This is useful but it's not going to work incredibly well for the time correction that we want to be doing. Now I can remove a warp marker by simply double clicking on it. I can also create a warp marker anywhere I want using my pencil tool. I can just simply click to add a new warp marker. If I want to delete a marker, I can move my mouse over that marker and double click on it. That will remove that warp marker 
from my timeline. The second form of warping that we can make use of is accordion mode. And in accordion mode, this is when we go ahead and select two separate warp markers. I'm going to go ahead and create one right here. I'll create another one here on another transient. I'm going to drag my second. This is going to warp everything that's between these two markers, but it's going to leave everything before my anchor point right here intact. So you notice nothing on this side of my warp marker is being affected. However, as I move this one around, I can change my transients. This is also useful, but again, this isn't really what I'm going to want to use for time correcting audio. The third option that I have is range warping, and this is the option that's going to be very useful for time correcting some audio. I'm going to go ahead and pay some special attention to this passage in the drums, because this is where, again, as I say, I think they could use a little bit of love. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can see my warp markers. So as I get closer, I can see my warp markers again. Now I'm going to use range warp mode. Now range warp is very useful because this is going to allow me to select a certain range within my audio region to which I want to apply the warp effect. I'm going to make sure that I have my multi tool selected. I'm going to move my mouse over one of my warp markers. I'm going to hold down shift and now I'm going to click. Now I've created three warp markers by shift clicking. My first warp marker is going to act as my anchor. This is going to be my anchor here on the left hand side. My warp marker inside of these two markers is going to allow me to move around that specific area of audio and time correct it. My last one again is going to apply my accordion warp effect. This is not always going to be what you're going to be looking for when you're time correcting, but again, very useful depending on the amount of space that you need to fill up with your audio. Now, shift clicking can be very useful. However, in my case, I want to just pay attention to some specific transients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, firstly, an anchor marker. This anchor marker is going to assure that everything before it is not going to be affected by the warping that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and select this first transient right here because things sound pretty well timed when my click track comes in with my audio right here. So I'm going to leave everything before this intact. Now I want to pay attention to these two specific transients right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple warp markers on top of them by just double clicking. And then I'm going to go ahead and give myself another warp marker here at the end because this one might need a little bit of love, but I also want to have an anchor here so that I'm not going to be applying the warp effect to the audio that follows these areas which I'm going to be applying my warps to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and nudge these transients forward a little bit. So I'll move my mouse over my warp marker, I'll get the double arrow icon, and now I can simply grab this warp marker and just move my transient just to the right a little bit. I'm just going to nudge it. I'm going to do the same for my following. So let's go ahead and play this back and see how it sounds now. So that sounds a lot better, and I'll show you the difference there. I haven't made a lot of changes, but I can hear the timing being fixed already. Again, you can hear a little bit of rushing right there, but as I go in and I re-add my warp markers, and then I go ahead and drag these, just to change the timing just a little bit, just to move these snares forward, I can hear the timing being corrected. So that works pretty nicely. Now, let's say that I also knew that all of my following transients maybe needed a little bit of love. I could grab my last warp marker here on the tail I can move it forward a little bit and nudge the rest of my following transients forward a little bit. This might come in useful. You'll find that this is really good with drum loops sometimes. Let's play this back again. So that sounds pretty good. I like that timing a lot more. I've definitely fixed a couple of errors in the drums. And now I know that everything will be synced up with my click track pretty well. So this is really useful, as you can see, for being able to fix small mistakes and also being able to fix large mistakes. Now I can add some crazy effects uh, by doing some of these things. If I wanted to get real crazy with my audio, I could drag a warp marker back and I could cause a kind of a crazy effect right here. So you can hear now I'm rushing it, or if I drag it the other way, now I'm going to cause a slowdown effect. 
So this is really useful for being able to add special effects to your audio as well. This might not be what you're looking for. Again, what we're looking to do today is simply correct time, and we've done that. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. So now we can move on. We can warp the rest of this track if we want to using the same method. Make sure that you've got an anchor point, and then just pay special attention to your transients as you move along using the range warp method. Again, you can shift click on a transient marker in order to create some new warp markers, three of them, and pay attention to the middle warp marker. Or you can use this method that I've shown you here which allows you to pay specific attention to the transients that we want to fix inside of our audio region that we're working with. When we've made all the changes that we need to make, we can go back into waveform mode by clicking on our view menu right here and selecting waveform view, and the timing will stay correct when we go back into waveform view. So there you go, sounds pretty good. The timing is definitely a lot better. Um, and I know that there's probably some other points that I can correct in these drums, but I've shown you guys now how you can easily correct some errors. So let's go ahead and talk about adding strike to our project in order to beef these drums up a little bit using strike. <laughs> 